Okay, so my trike has arrived from Electric Bike Technologies. I went with the Electric Sun EZ3 HD electric trike. And so they uh, sent me an invoice. And the invoice, of course, comes along with the packing slip when you get the trike. And the trike comes fully assembled. I opted for the trike with the basket. In the basket was all of the uh, manuals and battery charger and all of the extra things that I had ordered. And so this is the set of manuals and a couple of things that came with it. And let's see what we got. Let's get into it. First of all, we have a recumbent bicycle tricycle owner's manual. This is a generic manual that is in common across also all of the Sunseeker recumbent bicycle tricycles. Uh, you can see that this is 9th edition 2007, so they haven't needed to update this for a while. But this is basic safety information. That kind of information doesn't change. Uh, this information also talks about how to adjust a handlebar, uh, how to adjust a derailleur, how to adjust a brake. A lot of this stuff is pretty generic, and it really doesn't matter what bike or trike you have. It's really in common across everything. And this is important to have. They also send you an EZ3 USX HD Supplemental Owner's Manual. In this manual, you'll find all the instructions on how to assemble the EZ3 USX HD, but of course you don't have to do that because Electric Bike Technologies does that for you and they do a fine job on that indeed. But if you need to make any specific adjustments, for instance, the under seat steering is peculiar to this uh, trike. And so there are some other things here that are pretty specific to this trike, and they show you how to operate that, such as how to adjust the seat, sliding it forward and backward, how to adjust the, the back. A lot of other things are in this manual. Also, you get a catalog of the parts involved. So if you need to replace a part, you know what the part number is. You can order that part if you need that. So this has specific information, including uh, warranty information for the trike itself. You also get the e-bike kit manual. So this includes your warranty for the e for the electric portion of the trike. Um, this is your owner's manual for that. This tells you how to charge a battery, how to take care of the battery, how to put it on and off the trike. This actually tells you how to install the entire electrical system onto the trike but of course you don't need to do that because electric bike technologies does that for you if you opted for the option that i did where they send it to you fully assembled but if you need to make any adjustments it's nice to have this because it tells you everything that you need to know not only that but it gives you a full rundown on the lcd and how to set everything electronically now you're not going to need to set the uh, battery settings and things like that electronically but certainly understanding how to turn the system on and off, operate the system, set your trip odometer A and B, um, and your average, and you know a lot of the other things, how to turn on the backlight, uh, things like that. And then of course there are some other settings that you might want to do too. One of the things, first things you might want to do is take off the speed limiter. It tells you how to do that here. There's also a video on Electric Bike Technologies website and you can also um, look for it on YouTube, but all of that information is available. So this gives you lots of useful information, including specifications in the back and also a troubleshooting guide that you can use if you have any trouble with the system at all. Of course, you can also call Electric Bike Technologies because they stand behind the product. Um, you also get a, uh, some information about Recumbent and Tandem Rider Magazine. You can get free access to archived magazines and of course you have to pay for any subscriptions to that but it tells you how to access that here's your SRAM derailleur warranty so it tells you about that this I thought was pretty cool um, 
Here are all the Allen wrenches that you need to adjust any and every aspect of the bike. And this is pretty cool because with these three pieces, you can adjust anything and everything that you need to adjust from front to back. And that's pretty cool. And last but certainly not least, should you scratch your uh, USX HD, here's the paint that matches it. And you can paint over it and make it look good as new. One of the things that I've noticed about the USX HD is that it's a tank. It's pretty hard to hurt it. Um, and one of the reasons possibly why the ones that I've seen that have been 10 and 15 years old, they look almost new. I mean, geez, they give you a bottle of paint so that even if you scratch it, you can make it look new again. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I certainly wasn't expecting that. Um, let's put all this back and let's see what else we got. Next thing we're going to talk about is the charger and the battery. Now I opted for the largest capacity battery and I would highly recommend that you purchase the largest capacity battery. battery. Uh, the charger for the battery comes in this box. This is a lithium ion battery charger for a 48 volt uh, 4 amp charger and it's for the 48 volt battery. So it comes in this box. They give you this uh, printout here that tells you how to read the LEDs and they are a little confusing. So when the charger's on and it's not connected to anything, it's green and red. Okay. And when it's charging the battery, it's red and red. And then when it's done, it's green and red again. Okay. So LED one stays red all the time. Anytime there's power applied to it. And then the left, you know, the one on the left, which is LED two, uh, tells you whether the battery is fully charged. And then it tells you some other information about the battery as well. And let's look at the charger. This is the charger. Um, this is a 48 volt, four amp RT3 charger. And it has a fuse built in, it has two LED lights. One LED tells you whether it's on or not, and it's a red light, so it's either off or on, but it's always red. And the other light here that appears to be white is either going to be red or green, depending on whether the battery is fully charged. It'll also be green if it's not connected to a battery, but for some reason it's powered on. So this is the fan. And on the other side, we have the power connector itself. This is a standard power connector. And notice that there is no power switch. So once you plug this into the wall and plug this in here, the charger is charging. So that's something to keep in mind. This is the end that charges the battery. You want to connect this to the battery. This is what we call an XLR connector. The XLR connector has a ring and three pins. The XLR connector comes from the sound engineering industry. We use these for microphones. We also use these for balanced sound connections. It's good for charging batteries because charging batteries, you have three connections. You need three connections. The other reason it's good is because an XLR connector, you want a snug and secure connector. So you have this um, latch on the top of this. And so let me show you how that connects to the battery. I opted for the larger battery. This is the larger battery. This is a, a 20 amp hour, 48 volt battery. And here's the other side of that XLR connector. This is the female XLR connector. It has this uh, latch right here, and that's what fits into this slot. So you wanna line up the pins, put it in the slot until it snaps, until this piece here snaps into place. This is what's going to charge the battery. This other piece, this is what connects to your, bi to your uh, bike or your trike. There are two contacts here. You want to make sure those two contacts are aligned. This is a water resistant housing. Notice I didn't say waterproof. Um, if you get a little bit of light rain or something, it's probably not going to be a big deal. Um, 
But if it's pouring down rain, you want to get out of the rain as quickly as possible because this isn't really meant to be uh, driven in heavy rain or something like that. Same thing with the bag. The bag is water resistant, but it's not entirely waterproof. Again, you're not trying to ride this thing around in the rain. It wouldn't be much fun anyway because you're going to get really wet. Here's the bag itself. Uh, if you open up the bag, you'll see that there's a shrink wrap set of batteries in here. Batteries, if you were to see the batteries themselves, are uh, not unlike uh, AA batteries. Uh, the shape is a little bit different, but they're the same type of batteries as you would find, let's say, in a hybrid vehicle, except in a hybrid vehicle, you have maybe 14,000 of them, whereas here you probably have a few hundred. Uh, there is a, a grommet here through which this uh, cable can exit and also uh, this cable can be in, this cable should be inside the bag and should be zipped shut when you're uh, zipping when you zip this onto the bike itself and then this one comes out and this resists water once again it's not waterproof it resists the water so once you put it back on the trike once I'm ready I'm gonna ready this for the trike itself I've got a handle, I've got two velcro straps on this side, two velcro straps on the other side, they strap onto the trike, I'll show you later how to do that, and then there's this piece here, it also straps on to the trike. Um, I highly recommend that you get the higher capacity battery, because you'll have a lot more fun with the higher capacity battery, you really don't want all of your fun to stop, simply because... Uh, you run out of juice and especially on a direct drive motor Once the elements are no longer energized. They do provide some resistance So once you lose power You're actually fighting the magnets in the wheel and that's not fun So it actually would make the trike feel much heavier than normal So yeah, you don't want to be in that situation. So yeah, get the highest capacity battery that you can. I highly recommend that. The next thing that I did is I also got a flag. So let me show you that. Here's the flag that I got. When they showed me the video um, at the warehouse in Pennsylvania before they sent it out, they had just this piece in there and it looked really good. I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic because it was in the basket and the basket's up kind of high and I thought, all right, that's fine. But what I didn't realize is they actually have two pieces here. And so this goes in the basket. And of course you can't see how high this is, but this sits maybe eight, nine, 10 feet above the trike, which I think is fantastic because Phoenix is famous for, you know, killing uh, cyclists. And so having a flag that rises up that high uh, if somebody says they couldn't see me uh, I don't know what they're thinking in any case so this flag I think cost me eight bucks so definitely uh, opt for the flag uh, because they basically just put a, a, a device in the basket and it sits it up higher and I think it's just fantastic so I'm very pleased with the flag and that's all that I got with the trike.